What's happening, guys? So I have this really complicated thing here. This is vinyl stack stone siding. And they come in these big panels like this. Well, that's great when you just want to like put up a bunch of panels and never cut anything. But how do you cut this material that's got a million different bumps and the heights to it? So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. One of them is you can cut it with a grinder and it's gonna end up with this kind of really gross burnt end to it. But how do you get it to look like this where you got a nice factory finish? You know, that's what I want, right? So you can try cutting this stuff by just taking the saw and just bumping along the top of it and it's probably not gonna come out that straight. So what I like to do in these situations is I build what's basically a bridge and everybody's saw is different. So I'm only gonna go through the complexity of what this is and how to make the right measurements so that you can make one to fit your saw. But before we do that, I need you guys to do me a huge favor. We really rely on subscribers and also likes for our videos so that way YouTube knows that this is something that is important and our how-to videos get out in front of everyone else that hasn't seen them yet. So if you could do me a huge favor and like this video, I would really appreciate it. I know you're gonna like it anyway, so just go ahead and hit that like button before we get started. And also, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, hit the subscribe button, make sure you turn on the notifications so that you know exactly when we're uploading a new how-to video for all different types of things that are related to your house. So now that I got that out of the way, let's, let's go through this. So what I have here is this kind of goofy wood box thing. So, but what it allows me to do is allows me to take a piece of siding like this and I can slide it in to my channel here and then take my saw and I, can square up along this back fence here and, and it gives me a nice straight cut. So let's say we gotta make a, our final piece or something like that, right? And let's say that it's gotta be 10 inches. So I won't use a pen for this, I'll use a pencil. And we'll just make a mark at 10 inches. Okay. So now that I've gone ahead and made my mark, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it in here and then I'm gonna just push this through. However, because we have this fence, it might have hopped along and got all nice and scary, but look at the finish. It's a lot better than that finish that we had. So how did we do that? So the first thing that I did was I made a simple little two by four wall that was about 22 inches because our siding material comes in these 20 inch panels. So you might have six inch siding, you might have 10 inch siding, whatever you have, you're gonna wanna make a wall, a little studded wall like this, that has a height just a little taller than whatever material you're working with. And then you're gonna wanna put some plywood to act as a base, like a table in here. Now, I had this piece of scrap plywood that I just put here and then, cause I know I needed something at the end, I just put another piece of scrap. But you could make this nicer. Maybe you do siding all the time. And so you can make this as nice and as durable as you want, or you can just take scrap materials uh, off the job site and just build it for uh, the day. So once you have that plywood base that's gonna support your material, the next step is you gotta build these rails. So what I did is I took two two by fours and what you'll see in here is this material slides right underneath that. And I just make it a little bit higher. So these rails sit a little higher, but you need something to mount these to. So in my case, I just used two by eights and then mounted these rails to the two by eights and then kind of floated it and got it all nice and square with, so that it's equal and you still have that gap through there. And then you gotta take your saw. Now in my case, I'm using a cordless Makita uh, 36 volt saw. I like this saw a lot. It mimics the same kind of saw as like a worm drive saw, like a skill. But whatever saw you have, 
it really doesn't matter. And in fact, I'll grab another kind of saw. This is a more traditional saw. Now, what's cool about all these saws is this is a left-handed blade saw. This is a right-handed blade saw. Now, I've gone ahead and held the fence up. You can do this or you don't have to do this. Um, if you're not used to working with a saw, I wouldn't recommend putting anything in here. Um, but when we're doing production cuts and we're very used to working with the saw, sometimes we'll shim this guard up so that we can push multiple times. But for these purposes, you don't need to do that because this piece of wood is gonna push that guard out of the way. Let's say what's nice about this whole setup is it'll work with either saw. It's just a matter of which direction. So there's a couple common things about these saws. From our blade to our edge of our table is an inch and a half, okay? Now, it's the opposite on this saw, but the same rule applies. It's an inch and a half. So typically, your outside fence, the short, the short side of the table is gonna be an inch and a half. So let's say one guy likes using this saw, and another person likes using this saw. Well, you can make one of these tables that'll work with both saws. So I like this saw. So I would, I would set this bridge up this way. And what I would then first do is I'd measure my inch and a half and I'll draw a line here. And then I'll go ahead and I'll mount this board on the top. This is what my saw is gonna ride against. And also having this two by four here helps keep that blade nice and straight as it goes through the material. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna set these saws up so that it barely, see that? It's barely touching that plywood. That's gonna ensure that you don't start chopping this to bits and you're only gonna be cutting the material that you wanna cut. Now, like I said, let's say somebody else likes to use this saw. What you'll do is you would just spin this table around and then same principle applies where it's going to work with the other saw. It's just you'll have this board on the opposite side. Now some guys like to put two boards in there. I think that having one is plenty because you're going to just keep it nice and tight to that one side. And this is gonna be your guide to keep everything straight. When you put two on, sometimes that board will hit the motors of the saw. Sometimes it'll get bound up, especially if you use it one day and then you go to use it another day, the wood might change consistency with humidity and then you might have too tight of a fit or it gets sloppy. So I recommend just putting one guide uh, board on one side. And then you're basically using this the same way you would use any kind of miter box. The only difference is you'll put the siding in there. You'll line up your slot because then the first time you cut the, the board uh, or you push the saw through, you push it through without any siding in there and then that's gonna create this saw mark. And then what I like to do is then I'll move the, the saw over just one blade and then I'll push it again and I'll take out this notch so that this doesn't become resistance for the blade. And that is how you can cut all different types of vinyl siding with your own self-made bridge saw. And then the cool thing is, is let's say you got a short piece, right? Like this is the end of the run and you gotta like cut it, you know, right here. You could turn the pieces sideways with this Novak siding and then, like I said, you can keep the guard like this, and then that board is gonna just push it out of the way. And see how straight that is, but then how would you ever get a saw to cut like that? So that's why I really like using this type of setup, because even if this was your piece, see how you got all this different bumps, but it's cutting only where it needs to and it's keeping it nice and straight. It comes out really handy when you're cutting a lot of siding because siding has so many different consistencies. And let's say you got a bunch of pieces, you could put a little stop anywhere on here and then just run your pieces up to that stop, push them 
and keep going. And then, you know, this is nice and small. You don't have to throw it away. You can put this in the back of your truck or whatever. If you have any questions about how to build something like this or have other ideas or things that you'd like to see us um, show you how to do, leave those questions below in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them and make those types of videos for you. And like always, if you haven't subscribed by now, I don't know what you're waiting for, hit that button and uh, be sure to like this video or don't watch them anymore, but like it, please. It helps out a lot. So anyways, it's been a pleasure and I'll see you next time.